uh, my question is, are you going to be the ringleader of all this? <laughs> Who will uh, be the first I have, that is something we will decide when we have the committee meeting. Well, how are we going to get that arranged? Yeah. I, I have just talked to Sound Rivers, who's going to try. To, we have about 50 people signed up for the committee. Uh, that will require breaking down into subcommittees. And when the group gets together, hopefully a leader will surface. My uh, intention today is only to begin the process of creating a community organization to give citizens a voice. And we've got a great start. And from this step, we'll take the, you know, we'll move into uh, formalizing that committee, picking people for different parts, et cetera. It'll come out of the committee. Sounds True is trying to identify us a meeting place because we're going to need some big enough for about 50 people. The convention center will help. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, but I cannot stress the importance of cheerleaders in any community effort. So even if you are not part of this committee, there will be a website. We have a volunteer for that. We will have a Facebook page. We have a volunteer for that. We have a volunteer for providing uh, audio equipment in the future. Awesome. So, uh, so we can uh, do this in a uh, more productive way and I, I can still talk. Um, and so uh, this week I'll try to go through that list of people as soon as we can identify a space, we'll call a meeting. There will be future opportunities for people to come out and, and show their support. But right now, what you can do is contact those three people that did not vote for the MOU. Thank them. Go to meetings for upcoming candidates. Hold their feet to the fire. What is your position? What are you going to do? File to run. That's put. Somebody file to run in your wall. You know, uh, outlaw is not running again. So whoever the new person is going to be that you come out and vote for and get your neighbors and your friends. And we're going to need you to stand at the uh, uh, farmer's market yeah, and hand out flyers and take positions take petitions. So this is just a beginning. And if you feel you have the expertise to be the leader of this kind of group, please come out. It would especially be good to have somebody who has led uh, another committee uh, and successfully uh, taken on the city before. Oh. So if there's you know anybody like that, that's the person that could give us the best direction. Farmers and legal. I'm just a social worker. Retired. <laughs> I think that all people who use this park and care about this park, I don't care where you come from, if you're connected with the MS Bikeathon, those people put their tents down here. Contact those people. Say, let our city know this won't work for us. We, you, you want us to keep coming to your city? Well, this won't work for us. Right. You know, you know any organizations like that because they camp here. Right. So and and they we have the money towards the businesses here, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have the biggest MS bikeathon in the southeast. That's true. It'll mean a lot to the city if they contact them and say it doesn't work for us for you to put a hotel down there. We are not people that stay in hotels. We stay in tents. <laughs> so, uh, those are things that you can do now. So, is, yes.
when is the next board of the aldermen or something that maybe we can show up out there? The board of aldermen meets every Tuesday, uh, not every Tuesday, take that back, every second Tuesday of the month at City Hall starting at 6. Go in before it starts. You can sign up to give them your, your two cents on anything, on anything at all. So you have four minutes. They usually cap that to about 10 people at a time. But if we do it in a fashion where 10 people show up every single meeting and those 10 people talk about, no, we don't want you to take our part. How about bringing, uh, you were right wing types, bring back your stop the steal signs and we can uh, maybe make them here. <laughs> I like it. Stop the steal. Ah, uh, there is. Just a second, Wendy. Okay, go ahead. I just want to say about the, the meetings. They're, you don't get the agenda until Friday afternoon at like 4 o'clock o'clock. Published on the some journal publishes the agenda. You look, you click on that, go to the city's website, it will have the entire package of everything that's going to be discussed. And the meeting's that Tuesday, the following Tuesday at 6. So if you, if you push the city to say, hey, give us more knowledge, then because you know, Saturday and Sunday you can't talk to the city. So the citizens petition and say, hey, we want more notice, perhaps. This kind of stuff, we would have, you know, people may have not been so upset if they had more notice. There was that. another part to that. When you look at the packet, you would not have known if you had looked at the packet online and the agenda for last week or this week, you would not have recognized the agenda item as being pertaining to Union Park. It said, uh, it was a historical science society MOU. No description of what that was. So I think that was very deceptive. Very. Uh -huh. I think there has been a lot of closed meetings that that we apparently it, you can't get the meetings for uh, the minutes for. The Sun Journal alluded to that in their article. There's been an issue trying to get information on this all this whole thing. This you know Kessler has already bought the Elk Building. They know they're building a hotel. They don't need incentives to come to Newburgh. This is not about community development. It is not about having more people in our restaurants. This is a corporate grab. This is greed. And you have to wonder, just follow the money. Who is getting something out of this? She is. Not us. 